Hello, this is Janet from Servant for His Glory 44. This is my cat Stormy. Um, this is a video for anybody that um, needs to be baptized, but you don't feel comfortable going to a person, going to a church, or you don't have anybody to help you. Or just this is also for just informational uh, purposes. And um, if you've never been baptized, I believe it's very important to be baptized. And... Um, this video, I'm going to play this video that will be really helpful, and this is just what I've come to acknowledge about being baptized in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to help walk you through, um, if you need to be baptized and you either want somebody you know that's a believer to baptize you, or you want the Holy Spirit to baptize you, this video is for you. So I'm believing, and this is how the Father has instructed me to do this, is to make it a do-it-yourself. So you don't have to rely on a person. The Holy Spirit is going to be the one that's going to baptize you. And I'm just going to be a vessel, and I'm going to speak over you. So what I would encourage you to do is listen to this informational video. This is a really good video. I'm going to play it on my TV that's going to explain um I believe a lot of scripture that's going to help you determine um, if this is the um, the way that you should do it or not. Uh, I'm I'm going to encourage you to pause the video after you listen to this and pray to the Father. And if He leads you to be baptized in the name of Yahushua, then I'm believing that the Holy Spirit is going to baptize you in the name of Yahushua Jesus Christ. Yeah, I like to say the name Yehushua just because it's the Hebrew name. That's just what I prefer, but you can also be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And um, so I'm going to encourage you to listen. If you've never been baptized, um, then I'm going to encourage you to listen to this video and then pray and seek the Father's guidance and do your own research. Don't just look to me. I would encourage you to not just look at me. I'm just a person. But this is something the Heavenly Father has asked me to do because there's people that haven't been baptized and He would like them to be baptized. He desires for you to be baptized so that you can walk in fullness of life. So if you're out there and you've just never been baptized, you've made a confession of faith, but you've never been baptized, and I would encourage you to do this. I believe that it's very, very important for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to be baptized. Um, I do recognize that the thief on the cross, he, the Lord did say that he'd be in paradise with him, but I really believe that there is, that it's very crucial to be baptized in water, in immersion. And so, um, I'm not the one, I'm not looking for any debates or, um, arguments over this. I just believe that you should be baptized, immersed in water and make a confession of faith before you do so, because it's a, an outward, um, proclamation of what has happened inside and also that um, the Holy Spirit is is indwelling in you um, and um, let's see um, yes so I'm going to play this video now and then I would again encourage you to do research but I I think that this information this video is really good and really helpful I'd also encourage you to read the book of Acts. And that's where I, when I read the book of Acts, that's where I realized that I believe that you need to be baptized in the name of Yahushua, the name of Jesus Christ. And um, so I'd encourage you to read the book of Acts. And I believe that the gift of tongues uh, can be activated. I'm going to pray for that for you. And I hope this is helpful to you. Again, I'm just a, a human vessel. I'm a servant, so I just ask you to have grace on me because it's something I've never done before, uh, encouraging someone to be baptized. And so I'm just um, leaning on the Holy Spirit on how to do this. So if you have anything to add, you, you're welcome to email me. I'm always I'm open-minded within reason. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and play the video today. First thing that I want to look at is the keynote text that creates a lot of confusion for people, and that is found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 9.
Thank you for joining me today. First thing that I want to look at is the keynote text that creates a lot of confusion for people, and that is found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Here we have Jesus speaking to the disciples, and he is commanding them, and he says in verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now I'm using the word spirit there. Depending on your translation, it might say ghost or it could say spirit. It is the same Greek word. They're used interchangeably, but it is the Greek word pneuma and it simply means spirit. So I'm going to use Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost interchangeably. But he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. Who's them? The nations. That's who. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's identify then what is the name of the Father, what is the name of the Son, and what is the name of the Holy Spirit. Let's start with the Son. What is the name of the Son? Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So notice right off the bat, we've already identified what the name of the Son is. The name of the Son is Jesus. Now, let's identify what is the name of the Father. When you turn to John chapter 5, verse 43, it says, and this is Jesus speaking, he says, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. So right here, Jesus is saying, I am come in my Father's name. In other words, the name Yeshua, or Jesus, is the name of the Father. He says, you receive me not. So we've identified now, the name of the Son is Jesus, the name of the Father is Jesus. So let's find out now, what is the name of the Holy Spirit? In John 14, verse 26, it says, but the comfort which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Notice the important step there at the front. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So the name of the Holy Spirit is is coming in the name of Jesus or is the name of Jesus. We've identified so far that the name of the Son is Jesus, the name of the Father is Jesus, and the name of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is Jesus. In Acts chapter 2 verse 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, here it is, a very simple three-step plan. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's as simple as one, two, three. He gave them a three-step plan. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. What is God's name for salvation? Acts chapter 4 verse 10 says, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand before you whole. Notice that they said that it was in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Listen to this key verse in verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Notice that it said there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What name was that? Go back up to verse 10 and you get the answer that it was at the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This text says there is salvation in no other name under heaven given among men 
whereby we must be saved. A lot of people talk about the Matthew 28 passage, but they don't often talk about the passage in Luke 24, which is the exact same scenario. Luke chapter 24 verse 46 says, And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. This is Jesus Christ talking, and he says that he came to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. Verse 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. In whose name? In the name of the Christ. That's what the name was. The name of Christ is Jesus. When you fast forward to the book of Acts chapter 8, you will find that the disciples are talking to the Samaritans. In Acts chapter 8 verse 15 it says, who when they were come down, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. What name were they baptized in? Were they baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Were they baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? This passage says they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 17 then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, let's look at what happens to the Gentiles. We saw what happened to the Jews in Acts chapter 2, what happened to the Samaritans in Acts chapter 8, and now we're going to look at the Gentiles in Acts chapter 10. In verse 44, it says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all them which heard the word. Verse 45, And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 46, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, verse 47, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Spirit as well as we? Notice verse 48, And he commanded them, to be baptized in the name of the Lord. What's the name of the Lord? Jesus. Did he ask them to? Did he ask them if they felt like it or if they wanted to satisfy their conscience? It says that he commanded them to be baptized, not in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Let's go to Acts chapter 19, and we are going to look at a passage where the Apostle Paul encounters some of the disciples of John the Baptist. In Acts chapter 19, verse 1, And it came to pass, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Spirit. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto to the people that they should believe on him which should come after that is on Christ Jesus verse 5 listen to this when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus how was the Apostle Paul baptizing people in the New Testament or how was he commanding them to be baptized he was commanding the New Testament church and believers to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, not Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Verse 6, And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. You may ask yourself, well, how was the Apostle Paul baptized? Paul gives us the answer in his story in the book of Acts. This is recounting the story of the Apostle Paul's conversion, and it says, And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forwith, arose, and was baptized. When you go to the story later in Acts chapter 22 verse 16, the apostle Paul is recounting the story and telling what happened. He said,
says that Ananias told him, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Anywhere in the Bible, you see where they are calling on the name of the Lord. It is in reference to water baptism. How was the Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, baptized? He was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want to look at John chapter 3 verse 5 in a passage where Jesus is talking to a man named Nicodemus and Jesus makes a very profound statement. Verse 5 reads like this, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Notice that it said a human being, a person must be born of water and of the Spirit, or that person cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You must therefore ask yourself, how do I be born of water and how do I be born of Spirit? I want to look at a passage in the book of Romans to understand why baptism is so important. Important. In Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4, it says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Please don't lose the importance of this, okay? Because the Apostle Paul is writing here in the book of Romans and he is telling the readers, Don't you know that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ? Christ. Here is another passage where the Apostle Paul says, I was baptized in Jesus' name. Notice the significance of what happens though. We're baptized into Jesus Christ's death. Verse 4, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. When you are baptized into Jesus Christ, you are buried with him in baptism unto death. That way you are free to enter into another covenant with God. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This scripture fits perfectly in with what we just read in Romans chapter 6. We're baptized into Jesus Christ into his death in water baptism. And this one says that we are saved by baptism and identifying with Jesus Christ in water baptism. I want to tie Romans chapter 7 in with what happened in Romans chapter 6. It says in verse 1, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he lives. Verse 4, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Do you want to know how you get out from under the dominion of the law of death and sin spoken of in Romans? The way that you get free from the law of sin and death and its dominion, get free from the Old Testament covenant, is when you die with Jesus Christ in water baptism in his name, you die to the old covenant so that you can be married to another. There is also a spiritual circumcision that takes place in the New Testament, and that happens in water baptism. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism. You are putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, which happens when you are buried with him in baptism. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the 
name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. You'll pray over your food in Jesus' name. You'll pray for the sick in Jesus' name. You'll rebuke demons and devils in Jesus' name. You'll do everything you can in the name of Jesus. So why would you not do the one thing that we're commanded to do in the name of Jesus, and that's to be baptized in his name? Because it is the saving name, the highest name, the most powerful name, the revealed name, the manifested name, the name that every name was leading up to. Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That means that they were baptized in the name of Jesus and they put on Jesus when they were baptized with him. Mark chapter 16 verse 16 makes a profound statement. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned. Notice the parallel. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. You can be baptized and not believe, and you can believe and not be baptized. But Jesus said, the one that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that does not believe shall be damned. Why? because he didn't believe and therefore he wasn't baptized either. I love this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor idolaters, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But the keynote verse is so beautiful verse 11 and such were some of you notice this but you are washed but you are sanctified but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Notice this ties back in every single passage that we've talked about. They were washed, they were sanctified, and they were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. That means in water baptism and by the Spirit of our God being filled with the Holy Ghost. That's it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. Okay, so now if you're still on this video, I would encourage you to pause it and pray and maybe even do some research, read the book of Acts and consider some of these things and then um, come back to this video. And if you feel led, I would like um, to pray over you and I believe the Holy Spirit can baptize you and I'm going to pray um, by faith that the Spirit is going to move and that the Holy Spirit can baptize you as you immerse yourself in water. You can do it in your bathtub. You could do it, you know, in a, in a pool and it, just put the phone on a speaker away, of course, away from the water so that you're not electrocuted. Um, and then um, these are, so I would pause the, or I would listen to this first. And if you feel led to do this by um, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, then go back through or go back to this part. Um, it would be at the 22 minute mark. And then you're going to make a confession. And then I'm going to say a decree. And then you're going to go down. You're going to immerse yourself into the water, come back up. And then I'm going to pray um, just for. Um, the gift of tongues to be activated if that's something you want to pursue. But I'll, again, I'm just a vessel. I'm just doing what the Heavenly Father asked me to do. And this is not something I've ever done before. So I just ask that you have grace with me. But um, so the confession is going to be I. Then you're going to say your name. And you're going to say, I confess the Lord Yehoshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, is my Savior. Again, Yehoshua HaMashiach is the Hebrew name. I repent of all of my sins and ask you to forgive me, Lord. I claim the blood of Yehushua, Jesus Christ, to pardon my sins and apply the atonement of the blood over myself and my life. And I accept this newness. I receive newness right now in this time of baptism. This is my confession before the great cloud of witnesses. And then as you're... Once you've said that, I'm going to say this decree and then you're going to immerse yourself. 
based upon the profession of faith in the Lord Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, by the blood of the Lamb, by the atonement of the finished work of the cross, the Holy Spirit right now is being activated amongst you and baptizes you in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, buried with him in the likeness of his death, raised with him in the likeness of his resurrection to walk in newness of life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. I'm believing that someone is being baptized right now, and I'm so rejoicing. And I know the great cloud of heavenly, or the great cloud of witnesses in the heavenlies is rejoicing. And then, once you have um, settled yourself, I'd like to pray over you for the activation of tongues. Dear Heavenly Father, I apply the blood of Yeshua. I sanctify my tongues. And I believe, I make this confession, that I believe in the Lord Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, that he was sent by our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Yehovah, and that he gave his only begotten Son because he so loved the world, and he sent Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, in the flesh, as the Son, He died, He rose again, He ascended. Now He sits at the right hand of the Father as our faithful advocate and intercessor. And I lay hands on this person in the Spirit by faith through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I ask, Lord, that you would activate their tongues of fire right now. And I decree over them, Father, you said in Mark 16, 17, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. And so I'm so thankful, Father, for anyone that opened their heart to receive this baptism by faith through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Jehovah, that would give us this opportunity. Thank you, Yahushua that would make this happen. It's only by the blood. It's only by what you've done, Yahushua. Thank you. Thank you. We do all of these things in your precious name, Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach. And so I thank you for uh, taking the time to listen to this. If you have any questions, you can message me. I'd be glad to walk you through this. If you really need guidance, please reach out. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Take care. Bye.